tonight on Sports Night in Auburn. We recap Auburn's football's get-back game on Saturday against New Mexico in the debut of redshirt freshman quarterback Hank Brown. And then we will take a look at the upset-filled week for Auburn volleyball as they were soaring and falling against ranked opponents, and we'll update you on the dominant Auburn soccer season. All that and more on Sports Night in Auburn. Auburn, Alabama, the best atmosphere in all of college sports. He drives, it's lit. Welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. deep to the left. Welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. Going to the Welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. And welcome back to Sports Night in Auburn. Guess who is back? We are back. You better believe it. And we are better than ever. Welcome to Sports Night in Auburn. My name is Vince Wolfram. Last Saturday, a new era dawned for Auburn football. This new chapter was authored by redshirt freshman quarterback Hank Brown, who replaced former starter Peyton Thorne after his tough outing against California. Hugh Freeze's team entered week three against New Mexico with four first-time starters and a 32-game win streak in homecoming weekend games. The captain of Sports Night in Auburn, JoJo Cavanaugh, was at the game, and she has a recap of the Tigers versus the Lobos. JoJo, talk to me. After a surprising loss last weekend at home to the California Golden Bears, Auburn fans look to see what changes will be made this weekend against the New Mexico Lobos in the annual homecoming game. New Mexico went on the board first with this field goal, but with help with a 66-yard kick return from Jeremiah Cobb, Camden Brown came in for the touchdown. Next up, running back McQuarrie Rogers from the Lobos answered with a touchdown. With Hank Brown as the starter this week, KLS then came in with this 50-yard grab that set the Tigers up for Jarquez Hunter's first touchdown of the game. The Lobos looked to answer that touchdown, but safety Jaron Thompson came in with a sick interception, marking Auburn's first interception on the season. This interception led to Sam Jackson V getting a 26-yard reception that ultimately led to a Towns McGew field goal. New Mexico then answered right back with a field goal of their own. In Auburn's only punt of the game, freshman Malcolm Simmons came in for the tackle for a loss. Quarterback Devin Dampier then tried to get back in it with this 55-yard grab. Ultimately, though, this led to a missed field goal for the Lobos. Closing in on halftime was this 29-yard run by Damari Alston. With a score of 17-13 going into halftime, Jarquez Hunter came in for this 19-yard run that ultimately led into a fumble that was recovered by Auburn's Rivaldo Fairweather. This set up another Tiger touchdown with tight end Mike O'Reilly getting the grab. Alabama transfer Antonio Kite then came up with Auburn's second interception of the night running for 11 yards, which ultimately set up Jarquez Hunter's second touchdown of the night, making the score 31-13, to closing in on the third quarter. New Mexico came back in the fourth quarter with this touchdown from Caleb Medford. However, tight end Rivaldo Fairweather had other plans, getting yet another Tiger touchdown. After a punt and a loss of down from the Lobos, freshman Perry Thompson set up yet another touchdown, this time from running back Damari Alston, sealing the deal for the Tigers. Here is what head coach Hugh Freeze had to say after the game. Uh, we, we always celebrate wins. It's um, good to see uh, some joy in the locker room. Um, you know, as a coach, you have to you, you look at everything with a critical view, but uh, we, we should never uh, forget to celebrate those. Auburn takes the game 45-19, to 19, and we'll be back in Jordan-Hare Stadium next weekend to start SEC play against the Arkansas Razorbacks. I'm Jolie Cavanaugh, Eagle Eye TV. Yeah, um, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, like you said, it's definitely an uptick in competition, and um, they're definitely going to be a better defense than what we faced last week, but you know, I'm excited for it. They're a fundamentally sound defense, and um, kind of know what you're getting, so I'm super excited. I think the team's ready, and we're, we're going to go out and execute. Eagle Eye insider Micah Farmer joins me now. Micah, Hank Brown called the Arkansas defense an uptake in competition versus that of New Mexico. Looking back at New Mexico, what do you think Auburn will have to improve on this week to match the intensity of another SEC team in Arkansas? Well, Auburn just has to be more decisive. Arkansas has much more speed on defense than New Mexico, especially off the edge in the form of Landon Jackson. The linebackers are much more athletic, so overall Auburn's going to be half going to have to be quicker and more decisive with their decisions on offense, something that I'm looking forward to see if Hank Brown can do. Yeah, a lot of questions are surrounding Hank Brown, and New Mexico was Brown's debut as the starter. Plain and simple, what did you think of his performance last week? I was very impressed getting thrown out there in a night game at Jordan-Hare, in a rain game, no less, and he was 
pretty on it. The deep ball to Keandre Lambert Smith down the sideline especially impressed me. The accuracy there was on point. Hugh Frez, Hugh, Hugh Freeze said he had 100%. Hugh Frez. Yeah, we love Hugh Frez, my favorite coach, honestly. <laughs> but the checks to the line were 100% success rate, according to Coach Freeze from Hank Brown. So we'll see if he can keep doing that. A quarterback already that good on the middle side of the game is very impressive to me. Let's look a couple days ahead. Let's take a look at Arkansas. They travel to Jordan Hare, hoisting a 2 and one record with wins last week in a close one over UAB, and their loss was a double overtime loss to a ranked Oklahoma State team. Who are the key players for the Razorbacks this week in trying to get a win against the Tigers at home? Well, you know the players that Coach Fred is going to have to game plan <laughs> for are running back Jaquindon Jackson mainly. The Arkansas running back has two games of just under 150 yards back-to-back, -back, so Auburn run defense is going to need to bow up. Also, quarterback Taylor Green, very good at creating outside of the pocket. So we saw that beat Auburn with Cal quarterback Fernando Mendoza, New Mexico's Devin Dampier. They both were successful outside of the construct of the play on these out routes. I'd love to see the Auburn defense buckle down, play a bit less soft zone, see if they can close on that. Then finally, Zay and Sori Jr. at linebacker for Arkansas. This is the real heartbeat of the defense. This guy is a Georgia transfer, highly athletic, and if you want to move the ball up the middle or throw over the middle, you're going to have to contend with him. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a Micah Farmer special. Thank you, Micah. And that's Micah's measures of Arkansas before they travel to Jordan Air on Saturday for a 2.30 kickoff. If you were out and about in Auburn at that 2.30 early afternoon time last week, you were probably getting drenched in rain and wish that you had Eagle Eye weatherman Brett Fouts to give you the weather report. Well, don't go anywhere, because that Fouts forecast is next on Sports Night in Auburn. Good evening. I'm your weatherman, Brett Fouts. Let's discuss the weather forecast for Auburn sports this week. Starting off on Saturday, the Tigers will be taking on Arkansas in Jordan-Hare Stadium, and fortunately the weather forecast looks much more clear than last week. Kickoff is scheduled for 2.30 p.m. on Saturday, and temperatures at kickoff look to be in about the mid to high 80s. Wind is forecasted at about 5 or maybe 10 miles an hour, so hopefully towns shouldn't have too much trouble in that aspect. Sundown will be at about 6.40 on Saturday, so those temperatures should be dropping just in time for the fourth quarter. All in all, Saturday is shaping up to be a beautiful day for the SEC football opener. Also happening on the Plains this week, the Auburn soccer team begins conference play, having two home games this week, both against SEC opponents. On Thursday, the Tigers take on Vanderbilt at the Auburn Sports Complex at 6.30. Temperatures that day seem to resemble that of Saturdays with a high of 87 and minimal winds and cloud coverage. The sun will be going down right around kickoff, so the temperature should be coming down to around the perfect high 70s for kickoff. On Sunday, the Tigers take on Florida, and the weather looks to be about more the same. Temperatures will likely be in the mid-80s for kickoff on Sunday with minimal cloud coverage and wind. Kickoff for that game will be at 2 p.m. That's all I have for you today. It's looking like it's going to be a beautiful week to get out there and support your Auburn Tigers, and when we come back, we'll be with Vince. It's not just football that has returned to its winning ways here in Auburn. The seasons that volleyball and soccer have been having are taking headlines and putting the nation on notice. Two of Eagle Eye's best, Val Heffernan and Cohen Dozel, are in the studio to update us on these two programs. Val, volleyball was undefeated just under two weeks ago, but they ran into some trouble in their last time out. You are right about that, Vince. This past week, unfortunately, marked the first loss of Auburn's volleyball's 2024 campaign. After a huge win over number 15 Florida State at home, the Tigers traveled to the land of 10,000 lakes to take on number 19 Minnesota and Long Island University. On Friday, Auburn dropped three straight sets to Minnesota in a tough match where they never truly found their rhythm. Saturday marked a new day for Auburn volleyball. However, as the Tigers swept the LIU Sharks 3-0, led by the second double-double of freshman Lauren Dreef's career. Up next, the Tigers are staying busy this week as they travel up to Birmingham this weekend and play in the Alabama Showdown. Auburn will face Sanford and UAB in a doubleheader on Friday, followed by South Alabama on Saturdays, as the Tigers look to reach 10 wins by the end of this weekend. 
Here is Cohen on Auburn soccer's undefeated streak. Yeah, big weekend for, for volleyball. And now, Cohen, we're going with soccer. My brother, what do we got for me? Auburn soccer continues to dominate their competition yesterday. The NCAA RPI ranked the Tigers third in the nation. They are still yet to lose a game or even concede a single goal as they currently sit at 8-0 on the season. Friday, Auburn defeated Old Dominion 2-0. And the Tigers will begin SEC play this ho at home this week as they take on Vanderbilt on Thursday and Florida on Sunday. Let's check back with Val, who has an update on our favorite Auburn Tigers in the league. Auburn in the pros. Val, you just take it away. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Cohen. From the NFL to the NBA, from the MLB to the PGA, the Auburn Tigers have been killing it. So let's give you a quick rundown. Starting with golf, Auburn alum Pat Kaziri won his third PGA Tour event over the weekend. He secured first place at the Pro Core Championship in Napa, California. In the NFL, quite a few Tigers had themselves a weekend. Kicker Daniel Carlson of the Las Vegas Raiders went 6-6 six and six against the Baltimore Ravens, including a 53-yard field goal and this 38-yard field goal that led the Raiders to upsetting Lamar Jackson in the Ravens in their home city of Baltimore. Former Auburn safety, now linebacker Jamian Sherwood, stepped up this week for the New York Jets. After captain C.J. Mosley left the game due to injury, Sherwood came in and dominated in their win against the Titans. He led New York in tackles with 12 this game. In that same game, but on Tennessee side, cornerback Roger McCreary had his tackle on Brees Hall that led to a loss of six yards for the Jets. Finally, New England star cornerback Jonathan Jones was involved in a controversial call that cost the Patriots the game. Jones was called for defensive pass interference against Seattle wide receiver Tyler Lockett in overtime, which gave the Seahawks 20 yards and left them in field goal territory. Many viewed this as a bad call by the refs, with Lockett even telling Jones he did not think it was a foul. Here's that play. You know, taking a look at this play, I can see where it gets controversial. There seems to be minimal contact between Jones and Lockett, and Lockett even said he did not think this was a foul, which really makes you think what was going on in the ref's head when they made this call. Unfortunately, a tough luck for the Patriots as this call did, did cost them the game. Well, this wraps up Auburn's In the Pros this week. Micah, what do you have for us with some new injury news and roster moves? Thanks, Val. So the big one first up is Derek Brown, the Carolina Panthers defensive tackle who went down with a meniscus injury that will require surgery. He will miss the rest of the season, but at least he doesn't have to play for the Panthers. Next up is running back Tank Bigsby, who suffered a shoulder injury versus the Cleveland Browns, but looks to be ready to go versus the Bills this week on Monday Night Football. Then as far as signings, Auburn corner DJ James was signed to the New England Patriots practice squad after being drafted and then cut by the Seattle Seahawks after the preseason. Next up, former Auburn pitcher Richard Fitz got called up recently to the Boston Red Sox and has pitched 10.2 shutout innings across his first two starts, including five scoreless versus the juggernaut that is the New York Yankees. Then finally, Cleveland Cavaliers forward Isaac Okoro received a three-year, $38 million extension. And I don't know about you, but I would love that kind of money. Fortunately, I'm horrifically unathletic. But we'll send it now back to Vince, who has your first trivia question of the night. Vince, you what know, we got? I, I left because I was on the phone with Adam Schefter, and I told him that his job is in danger. Micah Farmer's coming for Adam Schefter's gig. And from our insider who knows ball to our outside event for ball, we've got some basketball news when we come back. But before that break, think about this Auburn Hoops trivia question and send us your answers. What was the last year that tip-off at Tumors took place? A, 2022, B, 2019, C, 2021, or D, 2023? We'll be right back with the answer in just a bit. Thank you so much for patiently waiting. The answer to our trivia question, which was the first year of Auburn basketball's tip-off at Tumors event, is letter C, 2021. Throwback to the last time tip-off went down at Tumors. The team was a stacked one. The 2021 season was one of the most decorated in Auburn basketball history. The Peacock Party was led by the eventual third overall pick in the NBA draft, Jabari Smith, followed by Walker Kessler, Devin Cambridge, and many, many more. They had a blast outside by everyone's favorite lemonade with a three-point and dunk contest just for students and the fans. 
Why are we stuck in the middle of this memory? Because Tip Off at Tumors is making its return on October 17th. This year, the event will be a full evening festi festival. Local live music, shopping, vendors, and a headlining concert by award-winning country superstar Cole Swindell. Auburn students, you should be there. Stay downtown and help the Auburn basketball programs kick off their seasons in an exciting fashion. Definitely a date you want to put on your calendars. On that same scheduling accord, from the hardwood to the diamond, my good friend Cohen is back here to talk about the updates on deck for these two Auburn programs. Baseball and softball both announced their 2025 SEC schedules last week. Led by new co-head coaches Chris and Kate Malvo, softball looks to make another tournament run after a positive season last spring, while baseball looks to make a turnaround after a disappointing season. Softball opens SEC play at Mississippi State, and baseball will host Vanderbilt to kick off conference play. From the diamond to the golf course, we are back with Val at the monitor. Val, a lot of golf news in the past couple days, both men's and women's. Talk to me. You're right about that. Looking at our men's golf, our national champions from last year, they kicked off their 2024 to 2025 season at the Inverness Intercollegiate in Toledo, Ohio. The number one ranked Tigers finished in second place with National Player of the Year Jackson Coibin solidifying yet another first place individual win. He's a stud. He is. Up next, the Tigers will travel to San Antonio, Texas for the Valero Collegiate from September 21st to the 23rd. Looking at the women's side now, our number six ranked women's golf started their 24 to 25 season strong with a win at the Cougar Classic. Sophomore Anna Davis finished runner up with junior Kate Cranston finishing in the top 10. Next, Auburn will travel to Norman, Oklahoma for the Sooner Fall Classic from September 21st to the 23rd. Cohen, tell us what's going on with our Tiger Tennis. Thanks, Val. In tennis news, six players competed in the SEC Challenge in Tuscaloosa this past weekend, picking up multiple wins against multiple SEC doubles and singles opponents. This ultimately gave the Tigers a good look at the upcoming season. In addition, former tennis star Raul Dobai has returned to the Plains, joining the staff as an assistant coach. And finally, women's tennis kicked off their season at the Debbie Southern Furman Fall Classic. Four Tigers represented Auburn at the tournament with sophomore Ava Esposito claiming a singles win. Up next, the Tigers will send two players to the ITA All-American Championships in Cary, North Carolina on September 21st. Back to you, Vince. A lot of tennis. You gotta love tennis. Thanks, Cohen. And I would usually say there's not much better than Auburn winning matches. But when Pop-Tarts are on the line, all bets are off. Our last trivia question of the show, which play from this week do you think was named the Pop-Tarts Crazy Good Play of the Week? A, Hank Brown's touchdown pass to Micah Riley. B, Keandre Lambert-Smith's 55-yard reception. C, Jarquez Hunter's two-touchdown performance. Or D, Jaron Thompson's interception. We will have that answer when we return. Pop-Tarts crazy good play of the week was Jaron Thompson's interception against New Mexico. Let's take a look at this one in the Pop-Tart wrapper too. How about that? Jaron Thompson in Randy Moss fashion over the top of the New Mexico defense. And you already know the celebration was on. I bet Toomer's corner was probably wild after that one because Jaron Thompson made the play of the night and Pop-Tart recognized it. So in addition to Jaron Thompson, getting highlighted by none other than Pop-Tart. A couple of other Auburn Tigers were honored on Saturday at Jordanair. Cohen, you've got, up, you've got the update on these track and field stars. Two Auburn Tigers were recognized at the Saturday's game for their success at the U-20 World Championships in Lima, Peru. Sophomore Jacoby Tharp earned gold for the United States in the 110-meter hurdles with a time of 13.05 seconds. This is a new American U-20 record, and he's also the current World U-20 world record holder. Sophomore Marley Raikiwasa also medaled in Peru as she finished third in the discus throw for Australia. Both athletes look to continue their excellence as Auburn track and field nears the beginning of practice season before indoor starts in January. 
on across country. The orange and blue began their season last week by competing in the Southern Showcase. The Tigers finished 13th out of 49 teams with 387 points and were led by freshman Alexandra Walsh, who finished as Auburn's top finisher and ended the meet in 49th place. Now, Cohen, there was a lot of running in that one, and I know Auburn's been doing a lot of winning. What if we combine them both, running the fashion industry and winning games? We're going to throw it over to Val now, and she has got all sorts of Auburn Tiger football fits. Thanks, boys. Well, you both look great, but a few weeks ago, our Auburn Tigers also showed up and showed out with their Tiger Walk fits. It's always fun when the boys are fitted up. It adds to the fun element of surprise here on the Tiger Walk. Well, we're going to see what Eagle Eye's top five favorite fits are from the past couple weeks. Starting off with our honorable mentions, you know him, you love him, Coach Freeze, or as Mike would call him, Coach Frez. He had this awesome suit owing to his daughters, You Are My Sunshine. He's a family man, he loves his girls, and we love him. Another honorable mention goes to graduate assistant Lawrence Johnson. Johnson had this awesome suit with a surprise of Aubie the Tiger inside. You know, I love the blue, it's solid, it's a classic. When you open it up, you got that little surprise element. Now moving on to our top five, coming in hot at number five, Austin Keys. The navy blue suit, the chain, the glasses, he is fitted up and boy does he look good. You know the glasses really add to the element of his outfit and he looks like he's locked in and ready to go. Coming in at number four, we've got Bryce Kane. Now this is personally one of my favorite outfits. I love the gray suit, the silver headphones, the silver blinged out chain. He looks sleek. One of my favorite outfits for sure. Coming in hot at number three, Jarquez Hunter. He always loves to accessorize with his cowboy hat and boy is it working for him. Adds a little bit of fun to his outfit. He's also got the bow tie, the matching pocket square with his orange and blue colors. He looks great. Coming in hot, number two, we've got Demarcus Riddick. He's got his hounds to the suit and it looks good. You know, I love the fit, but what really adds to it is the confidence. He's got his swagger turned all the way on and you can tell. You can feel the energy through the screen here. Now, our number one fit check of the week, well-deserved, coming in hot, Eugene Asante. Look at this outfit. You got the yellow, you got the pink. It's something that I didn't expect to see from him. You know, here on Tiger Walk, we've been seeing the classics, the navy, the grays, the whites, but this is something that I love. The pop of color really adds to the outfit and he looks fly. Well, those are our top five fit checks of the week and Eugene's is definitely my favorite. Boys, what'd y'all think about those? I was looking at it and it does give me a little bit of a pasta look. It's got the rigatoni. Guys? My guy Micah yeah. pointed out, if I'm Olive Garden and he's rigatoni, I think we'd make a pretty good team. <laughs> Throw a breadstick and some, uh, some some and salad in there and it's over. Go. It's exactly. over. 100%. Exactly. I love it. And that is all we have for tonight's show. Be sure to follow our Instagram at Eagle Eye TV underscore sports and our Twitter at EETV underscore sports. I'm Vince Wolfram. This is Val Cohen. And this has been Sports Night in Auburn. Good night and War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle.